Hey there guys, so you guys have asked me to show you how to set up MSI Afterburner so that you can actually use the overlay yourself to do testing. Now I'm going to show you how to configure it here. So what you go to is the settings here in MSI Afterburner and you go to the tab that says monitoring. Now here you have this long list of different things that you can monitor. You are not going to need most of this. The ones that you're mostly just going to have to focus on are the ones that involve the GPU and the CPU and in terms of FPS and 1% lows. I'm going to show you how to enable these. Now, most of the options that you see on the screen here for each thing, you're not going to need to change. The only things that you need to go with are the ones that say the show an on-screen display. And then the, depending on what you want to do, you can, of course, override the group name to actually name the specific part, because by default, it's just going to say GPU. If you want it to say your exact graphics card, you have to tell it what it is. So you just enable this. And of course, you do have the option to choose whether it's a text or graph or both. I always just go with text. Text is really just the way to go for almost all the options. And of course, we're going to change the name of this because I have an RTX 2070 Super. So I'm just going to type in 2070 Super. This, of course, all depends on the specific hardware that you have yourself. But after we do that, you don't need to hit apply right now. I just always end up doing it just out of habit. But you can just do all of these things individually. Just know that for each thing, you're going to actually have to change its name and associate it with the group that you want it to be in. So I also want this one to appear in the 2070 Super section. Now, of course, there are a bunch of different options and the name is very, very important to keeping everything organized but you aren't going to have to enable everything here and again most of these settings you're not gonna have to mess with it's just these two group name and the show and on-screen display and really you pretty much just do that with all of the different things that you want to enable now things like the front side bus and stuff like that we don't need now memory usage you don't need to override the name on it at least i don't do it just because i do like to separate the vram from just everything else that the GPU has. You don't want to group up too many things into one category because all it does is it makes that category extremely long and you don't want it to just spread across your entire screen. So I will normally just leave that one the way that it is. Now it just depends on whether you want to go with memory usage or memory usage based off of process. The process one is going to just tell you what the specific game is using in terms of VRAM. Everything that you do on your computer is essentially going to be using VRAM if it's being displayed. This screen right here is using up some VRAM. Now it's such a minuscule amount because it's just displaying nothing pretty much, but it is using that up. So you can choose which one you go with. I tend to just go with the full memory usage so that you can know how it would affect the entirety of the system itself. But if you just want to know what a specific game is using, you can of course go with the other option. But I normally just end up going with this and I do not override the name. I leave it as is. You can change it if you want. You could change it to say VRAM if you don't want to confuse it with the RAM. But all it says is memory or it just says mem. RAM itself on the system is going to show up as RAM. That is the name of its category. Now, I also enable the core clock and the memory clock of the GPU, but depending on those categories, they're just going to go in different locations. So the core clock, of course, is going to go with the GPU. The memory clock is going to stay with the memory category. And you just run through and enable this. Now, the CPU is another one that's very important. In terms of the CPU, depending on how many cores you have there are a lot of things that you can enable on here and there are things like you know individual core temperature core clock core power usage and core usage in general this can fill up your screen very dramatically because modern systems have a lot of cores because this counts threads as cores as well so on my 12 core 24 thread 3900x it is showing up with 24 different core options if I enabled all of these, it would just fill up my screen. It would it would be just unreasonable to have all of this enabled. I normally just go with the universal one that just covers the entirety of the CPU. And of course, I go to the override group name and I will put in the actual name of the CPU that I have. Again, this isn't necessary for you. If you're just testing for yourself, you already know the hardware you have. Now, if you're doing this to take screenshots for like long term use or you're going to be posting on forums or anything like that, or if you're going to be making your own YouTube videos with this, then, of course, set the name of the hardware that you have on there. One thing I will note is that the settings will appear differently depending on the type of system that you have. If you have an APU, it's going to be different. But in general, these are the settings that I have enabled right now. 
What I would do differently on an APU is only the fact that I would also enable the power option because the power option in, a, in an APU is going to tell you the entire power usage of the CPU itself. So it'll essentially just tell you the TDP you're running at. Here it will just show the individual CPU and the individual GPU, which is information that is kind of irrelevant to me right now. Now I'm only using my desktop to show you how to set this up because I didn't have MSI Afterburner set up on here. So I can show you guys here how to do it from the very, very beginning. But you can see here all of the different settings that I actually have enabled. These are the ones that, you know, I, I found to be the most useful and important. But the most important ones are here at the very, very bottom. You know, once you enable your RAM and you choose which one you want to go with, you have to go down to the ones that are the frame rate the frame rate average and 1% lows at the bottom, as well as the frame times all the way at the very, very bottom. So what you do is you enable it here and you just type in what it's going to be FPS. And you do the same thing for the one that is FPS average. At least that's what I put here, FPS AVG. And that's what I do for the averages. And of course we go down here to 1% lows. Now there are two categories. There are 1% lows and 0.1% lows and they're not enabled. So what you have to do is you have to just hit the little check mark next to it, which will enable it. And you could choose between actually having 0.1% lows enabled or not. Personally, I think 1% 0.1% lows are a little too useless in the sense that it's such a small percentage of frames that it isn't as indicative of the performance in general. But I can understand if you want to have it enabled just to be very, very thorough with your numbers. So it really is just up to personal preference. And I already have it titled here 1% low. And the difference that I do with 1% lows, or rather with the frame times, which is the next one, which is the last one that I think is one of the most important ones to enable. And it might be higher up on the list for you. I tend to bring it all the way down to the bottom. So really in terms of the way that you want these ordered, you can just move them around, but I want frame times to be at the bottom all the time. But when I enable it, I set it to text and graph so that we can actually have the frame time graph on screen. And of course, I do not override the group name for this one. It does not need to be changed. It's already going to tell you that it's frame times. And it also has the added benefit of telling you what API you use when you're you know, actually playing a game. So if you're running at DX9, dx11 dx12 it will actually tell you what it's running at but besides that that's really everything that i have set here in the monitor section now there are a few other options to set before we can actually start using this properly but in terms of settings that need to be enabled these are pretty much the ones that i always go with on every system keep in mind there will be certain differences depending on what system you are on what platform it is for example, Intel mobile CPUs have some of these options not available, but for all of the ones that I use, they're all available here. But next you want to do is go to the on-screen display section here and just map something for the toggle on-screen display. For me, I use just numpad number five. And I just enable this because MSI Afterburner will sometimes not appear on a game. It, you'll launch it and it just won't appear and you could just hit that button a couple of times and it'll actually, you know, enable it. Now, the next category you want to go to is the one here that it says benchmark. And what you want to do is map something for beginning the benchmark and stopping the benchmark, because this is what you need to enable to actually see the 1% lows and averages. And once you set this, you're pretty much good to go. You can just hit apply and hit OK. So let's jump into a game so that we can see how this runs. So jumping into Left 4 Dead 2, you can see here that the overlay is showing up, but it's extremely small in the corner there, and it can be hard to read, especially on the 1440 display that I'm on right now. It is very, very tiny. Now that could be perfectly fine for you. It's less distracting when it's that small for sure. And if you're again, if you're doing this testing just for yourself, you can work with that, but I can show you how to actually make it bigger and make it easier to read. So the way we do that. So on your taskbar, you go down to your tray here and there should be an option that says Riva Tuner Statistics Server. You click on that and it'll bring up this window right here. Now here you'll have a decent amount of options here. Now starting from the top, because here's one that's actually important, the application detection level up here. Now this, you could just leave it at default because for almost everything it'll work. There will be certain games that will not work well with the Riva Tuner Statistics. So you can go up to medium or high, but I would normally try to keep it at low if you can. 
because going any higher can also introduce problems in terms of the overlay being very aggressive on the windows that it wants to appear on. Especially if you use the EA launcher a lot, these two options right here will be your worst enemy. But besides that, just keeping it at low is going to be the best option for almost everything, but just know that these options are here if you're having troubles. Now, another thing that I like to enable that really makes the readability of everything significantly better is enabling the option that says on screen display fill. This will just give us an opaque background to make the text a little easier to read. And speaking of making it easier to read, we can also go to the on screen display zoom slider there and just turn it up to try to find what we've deemed to be the best option to go with. I think this right here is probably best though with a 1440p display. It's really not as big as you would have expected it to have been based off of what the slider was showing there, but it is now a decent size where it can be readable. If you want it to be bigger, you can, of course, make it larger than this. But this right now is more than adequate for me. I'm happy with this, and you can see now that we're getting almost all the information that we want on screen, but of course, we're not getting the averages and we're not getting the 1% lows. You have to hit the button that you mapped for the benchmark test. So I met, went with one, I just hit one. We now see the numbers on screen, and it's going to be measuring... From from this point on and that's really what it needs the the averages and the one percent lows need a starting point so that they can actually start to calculate what they need to actually give you that information so that's what you just have to do you have to just enable the benchmark and start it and it'll start measuring what you need it to but besides that this is pretty much everything at this point at this point you are good to go obviously it all depends on your specific system what exactly the things you're going to want to enable and where you're going to name them and all of that but in general these are just the settings that i go with for pretty much everything everything. So I hope you found this useful, especially if you're someone that has been interested in trying to get into, you know, doing the kinds of videos that I do. This is the most relevant and useful information to give people so that you can actually help them understand how the performance is really going to be like, because just showing averages and just showing, you know, the FPS does not tell you anything about how the game actually plays. You need to use the 1% lows and the frame times to really map out how this is actually performing. But again, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.